Hello, everybody. My name's Dion Morales, your host of the Gold Squadron Podcast, and we're coming to you live from the top 32 of the Corellia Galactic Championship Qualifier. Super excited to be here. These players are about to face off. We'll wait one moment, make sure that we get a ship actually moving before we continue. There it is. So, uh, for all of these Galactic Championship events, we're pairing up with different content creators in the community. This is YouTube channels, Twitch channels, big and small. Super excited. And for this match, our community team up is with Nickel City X Wing. How are we doing today, Greg? Oh, good. Peachy, dandy. Looking forward to some classic X Wing action. Fantastic. Now, before we go too far. I want to remind everybody that you can play Choose Your Champion with us at home. <clears throat> We're actually going to get that activated right now. And you can wager your GSP points on the match. Super easy to participate. Our mods can help you out in the chat if you need any help. Plenty of experienced people there. But, uh, Greg, go ahead and break down these lists for us. All right. Starting with Daryl on the Rebel side, we've got one Arvel Kring. Is that a superstar destroyer or is it Rack? We'll find out. He comes equipped with intimidation and marksmanship. And then we've got three, count them three, Rogue Squadron Escort E-Wings with R3 Astromech equipped, so double locks for everybody. I call it the three-wing list. Hey, me. Then on the Empire side, we have got Rear Admiral Jirnu. It's Rack with Ruthless, Darth Vader, Triple Zero, Admiral Sloan, BT-1, and Dauntless. I'm sure that's a few points. And four. Count them four. Academy pilots. Just, just regular old TIE fighters. Doing their thing. That's right. Coming to a theater near you this summer. <laughs> <laughs> Rogue 2. That's right. Now, um, looking at these lists, I'm going to go ahead and, and give a little bit of my opinion, and then, then it's your turn, Greg. Going before this match in our in our pre-production meetings, I I gave my concern that in this matchup, Daryl could have a difficult time because his list is not necessarily built to to fight against lists like this. It's really dependent on his target priority. But before I get too far into that, um, wh who do you think who do you, who who are your galactic credits on? Well. My heart wants E-Wings, but my head says Sloan Swarm. But I also bet everything every time and always lose. So, I don't know. Maybe you should bet Rebels, because I would bet on the Sloan Swarm. <laughs> I see there. I see there. Now, it's, if... a, it's just such an effective... Oh, yeah. It, it is an absolutely effective uh, combo. So let's actually go through how all this works because we might have some people who are not entirely sure. So on Rack, there is a pilot card, excuse me, a crew card called Admiral Sloan. The ability reads, after another friendly ship at range 0 to 3 defends, if it is destroyed, the attacker gains two stress tokens. So that means one of those four TIE fighters, if they're destroyed and they're within range 3 of Rack, whoever killed that TIE Fighter is going to gain two stress tokens immediately, shutting down actions, shutting down movement possibilities, and then in addition to that, while a friendly ship at range 0 to 3 of Rack performs an attack against the stress ship, it may reroll one attack die. And that's whether they got those stress from Admiral Sloan or on their own from doing red maneuvers, linked actions, etc. It's one of those things that makes people who have linked actions and want to use them hesitate just a little bit. One thing I find interesting, though, for the E-Wings, 
the self-stressing mechanics might not actually be too big of a deal because they're engaging already with their target locks. The target locks are not the problem. So they're not going to need to do anything like boost lock or roll lock, which is on their action bar. They're going to, they have it already. There's not a, there's not really an issue there. The, the concern comes in, later in the game when you're facing off with Rack, who's able to strip some of the green tokens they got in and you have multiple TIE fighters uh, firing on an enemy ship. I mean, things, things can go down hard. Now, one of the things we identified pretty quickly is the fact that Daryl did put locks from all three of the E-Wings onto... Um, onto rack i believe right there's one two three yes all three of them are on there so that is the priority target if i'm daryl yeah it it has to be like you just i it's sloan is just so good and e-wings they're dial the blues are just the ones the one banks and the one forward and then two three four forward so if you get stressed your options to alleviate that stress are not good like if, if you don't kill Rack here, you're going to have a, a hard time. Now, I will say, if you get some range 3 bangers on one of these TIE Fighters, and you can take out a TIE Fighter early without getting really in the muck of it, that could be beneficial. I, no one's going to say no to that. Mm. But you need to take Rack out. It's not like Rack's going to be defending with many dice, so... Right, no. ex exactly. The intimidation from Arvel is is a non-factor. I'm curious to see how Arvel actually gets used. Um, I, from what I know of Daryl, uh, I've met him quite a bit in person. I've seen him play, um, and, and he attributes uh, me to his his latest play style. He's been playing a lot of basically Rebel Beef, no less than four Rebel ships on the table at a time, which I mean I think is just the play style. But it's something he started with success when I gave him a list at Adepticon. Uh, now two years ago and he's been sticking with it since and uh you know he likes to do a starting setup that he does every time it's comfortable for him and i'm curious with the approach leading with arvel makes sense against a lot of when you're playing against ships that have a lot of high agility against aces because arvel wants to do his intimidation thing be able to uh, fire at range zero um but I'm, I'm curious to see if maybe he could have approached with Arvel a little bit differently, maybe coming from the flank and being able to use that ability to uh, to get some shots into Rack early, staying at range zero and just doing some pot shots. Yeah, you got to be careful with Arvel too. Even though he has intimidation, if you focus boost into like a tie to get that intimidation off, right? Mm -hmm. You're giving every other tie, and most likely at range one because they're going to be flying pretty close together, Rerolls. Yep. Like, Arvel, it's, I mean, you might want, Jake might have been, like, a, a more efficient A-wing here, but obviously you don't get to, like, you pick your list and then you you get with your opponent. So Arvel might end up being more of just a, a ship you use to actually create offense instead of taking away defense this game. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, looking at the approach, both of them being very cautious. Now, before we go too far, I want to remind you that all of our rounds today are sponsored by Curled Paw Creatives. Use that coupon code Corellia2020 for 20% off of your order. Get your acrylic now. That way, when you're ready to return to the table, or if you have already, you can do it in style. We'll tell you that here. Uh, Dion Morales, only place with Curled Paw Creative tokens. All right, that's how we do. And Greg only drinks Diet Snapple Lemon Tea. Five calories. No carbs. <laughs> um, you're, I'm, you need to send an invoice to Snapple now. That's how that works, right? You understand how hard I have been trying to get on. Because Snapple, the, the company that owns Snapple makes two drinks. Dr. Pepper and Snapple. Are you telling me? That the two best drinks in all of mankind are made by the same people? Sponsor me! <laughs> I mean, I think if they can survive with just two drinks, they probably don't need to sponsor much because people are already drinking it. That's just good business. Oh, I, I would provide them zero value. <laughs> all right, ooh, Arvel moving in here at range two. He is in the firing line. Yeah, I actually don't hate this engagement for the E-Wings right now. If they, if they slow roll to one where it's all... Range three shots. Well, okay, that was a little fast, but that's fine. 
I if they can get a TIE fighter off the board here, yeah, they'll take stress, but it's not in a terrible situation. Like Rack is pretty far behind and you've eliminated shots. You're gonna have to take some TIE fighters out sometime, so might as well do it when it's advantageous. Absolutely. I just think what's gonna matter is um spreading out the stress a little bit. Ooh, the bump here, not great. Not great. Let's see, that is... Does that one have a target lock that's going to be reachable? He does. Uh, red does have a target lock onto green. So I would prioritize that shot first. Just get that out of the way. You have a target lock. And then you can um, fire with uh, one of the other E-Wings. But yeah, I think you would... If I'm Daryl, I need to clear two TIE Fighters this turn. I don't know how easy that is, though. Yeah, I, I see that. Rack's going to get the first shot here. It's going to be a range 3 banger onto Arvel. Bow in the box, my man. On in the box. Yep, here we go. Same result. Justice from the <laughs> dice gods. Dice don't lie. Yep. And that was into... Arvel, the A-Wing, I believe. Waiting for the defense. Arvel will get four. It's at range three. They got just two of those dice are stacked up. And two evades. Hmm. Clean. Uh, Metal Malta telling me that the Dice God's name is Nuffle. I'll name my Dice God what Nuffle. I want. Okay. More like e -nuffle. Am I right, everybody? All right. I'll see myself out. Cricket, cricket, cricket. All right. <laughs> All right. Here we go. E-wing time. So, Rack, solidly outside of the range of those E-wings. He likes that. Biggest reason is because the Sloan of... see who he pinged. Yeah. Uh, we, we're not entirely sure which TIE Fighter he's going into. He probably said it. But that's three hits. Three natties, though. We'll, just, we'll follow the cards here. One of them is going to be hitting. TIE Fighter likes that. And that was into green, taking one damage. Next attack from the E-Wing... Red E-Wing. Probably his name is Patrick. Yeah? Huh? I saved you from that one. I delivered that one. You're welcome. Two hits. Brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> he has a lock out there. I think this is your chance to use it. You're not going to be able to require, acquire it again. I don't know why you wouldn't spend it. I don't, I don't think he rolled that just as a course of order. I think those were flips. Because there's nothing in the uh, oh, you, chat, you are, and it looked weird. You are correct. Probably just hit the wrong button. They are right next to each other. There it is. All right, one hit. And plenty of evades. <clears throat> oh, he had a target lock. He had an opportunity to, to spend. Three hits. And now the debate whether to spend the focus or not. Oh, here we go. We're just going to re-roll it. One. I'm out of the box, but yeah. one's going through still. And got two. All right, one hit. Slowly picking away at that TIE Fighter's mouth. This is, this is what Jason wants, though, is slow damage if he's going to be taking any, forcing multiple shots yeah. into a single target. Yeah, your two TIE Fighter goals going to be hard to achieve. Now, cause you gotta you gotta send yellow into green and at least get one off. Oh, 
What do I know? Go to ping. Okay, uh, Nick, can you grab the focus token? The, there's a focus token on Daryl's side that actually got moved when they grabbed the target lock. That TIE fighter should still have a focus. It's to the right of the uh, green dial. All right. We have another shot here coming from yellow. Or did he did he use it on his uh, on his defense? Uh, he's changed his mind. He's going to green. No, he hasn't. Green hasn't spent their focus. I didn't think so. All right. All right. Cool. Yeah. Hit crit. Coming in from the crit. E Out of the box. Eats paint here. Looking for the squiggle. Got it. That feels good. Squiggle city. When that TIE Fighter gets to live and forces you to attack for a whole nother round, that's uh, that's sad news for Daryl. Yeah, and that is going to force a closer engagement too, which puts Sloan into play. Look at me, sounding like I know something. Not bad, not bad, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Arvel trying to see if he can clean up the A-Wing at range 2. This is going to be 2 on 3. That TIE Fighter still has a focus token. Only one. Only one. That's average though, right? Yep, that's, that's the expected result. Just looking for paint here. Ooh, all right, got it. Got it. <laughs> The fun part uh, about the TTS dice is the physics that you get to see. You get to kind of see the like, oh, it, it could have been this, but it wasn't. Yeah. Uh, you get to hope for a second, and then it ruins your life. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> All right, time exactly for exactly like real life. <laughs> Tie fighter barrage coming into Arvel. Spends a focus for one. This is the cool one. part about being I ones. You don't have to worry about spending your focus. You know you're safe after. Reckless abandon. Ooh, forcing the focus expenditure or taking a shield. Either one, not a great position for Arvel. We'll see what the call is. I'm a fan of spending it when you got it. You can't plan for the future, but I understand people have different opinions. Takes a shield. I mean, that, that right there is leaning on hope that at some point you roll double eyeballs, but it does feel bad when that gamble doesn't roll out. Hit oh, crit. Yeah, rebellions are built on hope. This, you know what? This is true. Cassian Show, coming to Disney soon, maybe. I hope so. There you go. Now you spend the focus, because you would... Take that crit on the on the. On the I guess it would just be another shield. Oh man, seeing all these we focus results. Half point, so. That's true. He's right. taking it. He's That's taking it. He's holding on to it for 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 a best case scenario where you could where you stop two hits or stop a crit from going into the hole. Well, this is this is the chance right now. There are Green's roll. There's one other shot after this. Well, you, you spend it now spend or you it die. Now. <laughs> <laughs> And then we'll get one more attack coming from the TIE Fighters. We have somebody in the chat saying, why do A-Wings roll so bad? They don't. Wait, they, though, that actually was some pretty pretty decent rolls um, <laughs> on average. But yeah, there yeah, was... Yeah, he got good rolls. He just didn't modify them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he, had, he had focuses. So it looks like he did spend it without actually physically showing us that. 
because he took one damage. So you have to think that that was a focus spend. Mm hmm. It was. And blank and out there. Blank out there. So Arvel did get to live. Did get to live. I mean, you trade you trade two hits on a Tie Fighter for three on an A Wing any day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now the engagements are going to get up and, and real. Yeah, we're, we're about to get into range uh, one. The biggest advantage with having initiative one is the fact that you know exactly the space available for your ship to go. So that allows you to yeah. get yourself in blocking positions. Uh, you, you know, you get to, to set the tone for the next round. The challenge, of course, is if your opponent does something kind of sneaky that you're not expecting, you can be caught off guard. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see where that ends up landing them. Yeah, this this rack is decked out to really take advantage of stress ships as well. Got Vader triple zero to either give a stress or get an extra mod. Et one giving you extra crits. Like. Uh, this could get real hairy here. Agreed. Now, a couple of uh, questions I've seen in the chat that I want to address. If you want to see all the lists that were played this weekend, instead of going to tabletop.to, because I have it completely locked down so none of y'all are poking around in there and slowing down our system, <laughs> I have it available for you. Just type exclamation point lists in the chat, and you will have a link to a PDF that is searchable, and you can go search to your heart's content. It is alphabetical by name, first name of the players. So you guys have all all of that. Is anyone from Sweden in the top 32? We actually don't have their locations uh, listed. Yes, yeah, Mikey's. I I locked it like uh, maybe r like right before we started. It got locked. And I want to thank all 443 of you beautiful souls watching today. Thank you so much for hanging out with us here on Gold Squadron. Oh, does your thing say 343? Because my Twitch says 453. Dad, yeah, there's a little delay on my counter, on my on my screen. So sorry for the ten of you oh, who, who just walked in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Five straight. Academy pilot making sure nobody touches him as long as we don't get any K turns should be safe. Jason doing a great job ah. of taking up space. Ooh, got a got a bump I there. To say, how do you feel about the E wings just going super fast and maybe only taking a shot from rack and regrouping here? Because this is going to be a really weird engagement for them. Yeah, looking at the amount of distance that the green Tie Fighter covered, I think five straights could jump over. And here we go. This starts it right here. Arvel gets over the top, looking like uh, looking like a linebacker. Sorry, wrong football position. I think I meant running back. I tried. Sorry. I tried. I failed. Sorry, football fans. Wide, wide receiver, tight end. <laughs> Could be a center. I don't know. They're tall, right? Whatever feels good. Centers are tall. <laughs> now, looking at the position. Yeah, he's calling for a boost here. Yeah, the, the boost gets you stressed, which, you know, I mean, is, is not going to be a huge issue unless Rack has a shot on you. Um, but I, I don't see any world where Jason would be turning away. So the, the boost seems like honestly a pretty solid choice or the barrel roll. If Jason is turning hard to the right, that would be a, um, uh, that would be a yeah, block. That's pretty much the decision you have to make. Where is Rack going to go? Yeah, but he already slapped down the focus, so he would not be able to do the barrel roll after the focus. So he does take the boost. Yeah. We're, we'll see where he goes. And Good gets the block. Very nice. Had the E Wings moved yet? No. Oh, they have Jason, Jason got excited. Jason got excited. He's like, oh, you blocked me. Oh, wait. I haven't seen where three of your ships need to go. Well, now that <laughs> now that Daryl has uh, has revealed his trap card, the be able to look at your dial in the middle of the round card, let's see if he can take advantage of the E-Wings with their positioning. Listen, I get it. Dauntless is a fun card to play, and sometimes you just can't wait. Let's 
see what these E-Wings do. Debating which one to activate first. Looks like yellow is going to take a two bank. Bumps, which means we're taking a couple of shots from TIE Fighters there. Tried it. The one didn't clear. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, that one cleared, One straight clears so there. Get some kind of mods. <clears throat> green is the injured tie, and green won't be taking any shots either, so green will live. Yeah, I think if I'm Daryl, I know that you got some range one tie fighters there. Do not shoot them. Shoot rack. You got to start getting I, through that yeah. hole. It's so much health. 16 is a lot. Yeah, I'm wondering if Vader will be... It looks like it's right on the cusp of where 2 and 3 would be, maybe slightly into 3 on the yellow E-Wing. I wonder if Vader is going to trigger here. Uh, I think the arc is but left Arbol, and... You, you have to give... Yeah, left, right. So, I think... I think it might clip that E-Wing, that yellow E-Wing. Yeah, it's close. If you're Arvel, you have to give Rack to calculate. Like, you're not going to double stress yourself and just leave yourself without yeah, agreed. any actions on one. So... So Rack gets to go first. Rack does have Dauntless, has the option of being able to take an action um, after partially executing a maneuver. It does. I think I'd probably reinforce as my action if I was planning just range three. So did Rack opt to not do an action? It looks like it. Yeah. I don't think he triple zeroed either. It's just miss triggers, but with so many cards on rack, it's easy to get lost. Right. Ends the Vader force for three. Nice. Three hits. And this is a range three shot. This is going into that yellow E Wing. Here we go. And only taking one, no green tokens on that E-Wing. First shield. Honestly, that's not the worst thing to ever happen. I got out of that pretty okay. Might take two more shots from these TIE Fighters, but you're not stressed. So he did spend the force to flip the... Uh... On the attack, right? Yeah, he spent the force. Cool. On that third dice. Oh, wrong, wrong chat. <laughs> I almost typed it in the the Twitch chat. Yeah, okay, it got flipped. <clears throat> this is on rack blank out has a, has a target lock though yep let's set that up early using the e-wings ship ability spending it two hits from nothing that's way better oh yeah first two shields and rack is just the corner of rack is in range two so we won't get a dice This is a fully modified shot, potentially. Might want to hold on to the focus for defense, depending on what the roll is. And we are waiting for the dice. That was yellow that just shot right. Did we have that? Backwards. No, actually, the green was the first shot. Green was the first shot. This is yellow now. Okay. Yep, yellow's up. 
three. Hit crit. Okay. Spend that lock. I spend it. You yeah, spend, spend it. it. Spend it when you got it. Yeah, because if you can get through both those shields with hits, that crit hits the juicy, juicy hull. Spends the target lock. Oh, just oh. misses it. Just misses it. Two and a half, and we round down. Hey, crit. Lamont's there, so shields down on rack. You can start chewing in. You get a hull breach early. Never know. Om nom nom nom. I thought you were staying forlorn there for a second. I, was like, I don't understand what forlorn messes you with anything. Yep. Yeah. Om um, nom nom nom. Oh, you know what? Um, yeah. I think Rack rolled too many dice there. It uh, literally Not that it matters. from one to zero doesn't matter. Yeah, Inti intimidation, yeah. intimidation, intimidation. I saw like five hundred people writing intimidation in the chat. Yep. Yeah, but you gotta validate their feelings. I'm validating, know? validating, validating. <laughs> <laughs> As the 14th largest X-Wing streamer, I feel confident in saying that. Yeah, and Intimidation is uh, is a must ability, not a may ability. All right, here we go. So, well, I take the shot into red just to try and strip that focus token. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. That is, that is your best shot. You don't have a range one. He might be tempted to go. Does he have a target lock on that one? He's, he's checking his target locks right now for the TIE Fighters. Yeah. He doesn't have one out there, I believe. Unless there's one on this. Three reds. On three reds with a focus. And it's the same as three reds with a target lock if you're not double modding. I think the target lock gives you a slightly better chance at crits. But pretty much even. Yep. He's going at yellow. Looks like he's taking this on yellow. Mm-hmm. And whiffs nothing. So that is the end of engagement for this round. We're moving to our next set of dials. Those uh, those tie fighters got shoot. Ah, oh, end, end of Daryl's engagement. Shoot. Sorry, this is <laughs> it's moving a little. It's slow. not even the end of Daryl's. Arbel has to shoot as well. Yeah. Come on, Arbel. Arbel does have marksmanship on him. Yes. So oh, there you go. Hit to crit. Way to get a crit in. Hit to crit. Yes. Oh, crit right. crit. crit. You remember? Does he remember the uh, marksmanship trigger? See the hand hovering over the guy. Yeah. Yes. Damaged engine. Om nom nom nom. Damaged engine increases the difficulty of those hard turn maneuvers, which they're red now. And a wounded pilot. Sloan not only gives stress, but takes stress as well. Sloan giveth and taketh away? <laughs> yes. Like she took the Empire away from the known galaxy into the unknown regions to form what would eventually become the First Order. Star Wars, we all love it. This is all true. All right, so here, the TIE Fighter's turn to try to maybe try to take an e-wing off the board they can focus all on red there you go there's the first shot <laughs> i think what i would have done though is i would have activated maybe pink first but we'll see how it shakes out one The reason there is so, I, would, I would have gone pink first, uh, the pink TIE Fighter first into the red uh, E-Wing. If you don't do any damage there, then you go range one, both shots into ye into the yellow, which has a shield down. That shot goes through. A hey, one damage. Here's, here's my little math nerd stuff here. Is if you focus on red, you're getting six dice in with the three TIE Fighters. If you focus on yellow, who already had a shield down, you're getting six ice damage in with the two, and you get an extra shot on another Ewing. Sounds like a bonus to me. Another one hit. One hit again. Squiggle. You made it. <clears throat> a 
And the final shot, this is a focused TIE fighter going into that red E-wing. Oh yeah, or you could have had nine dice into green. Mm. Options. Spice of life. Hit crit. I do love a good focus fire, though. I don't think it's a oh. thing that people practice nearly enough. Oh, my. All right. All right. Let us get a the disrespect there. natties in the chat, please. Jason calling for the natties in the chat. <laughs> Very uh, nice. Dion, I have someone who would like to say hi, if that's okay. Uh, I'd Maybe? I don't know. I guess I'll find out after. Hi, Gerg. Thanks, Gerg. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> All right, so now... <laughs> Broken. Actually, hey, guys. Sorry, I wanted to pose a question to both of you guys for maybe the chat because it just popped up. Yes. Um, do you guys think it was beneficial maybe for Daryl not to have taken off? The green TIE fighter in that first engagement, given what Sloan can do, given the positioning and being able to get behind the TIE fighters in the next couple turns, do you think that actually worked out in his favor? I mean, something. yes, yes, because I mean, you end up not being double stressed for sure. There's, <clears throat> but there's an, also an argument. There's a, there's a timeline here where the, the natural roles for Daryl um you know could not have been as good and then you could not have had these crits on here like there's a lot of um th there are definitely timelines where taking off the tie fighter gets you some points though i will say it's it is ideal to have half <laughs> and now you're almost half points onto uh rack at this point so i think the ultimate answer to your question is yes this time i think it worked out so like the way the way they're laid out right now I think it worked out well because you gotta unless these tie fighters can fit in k turns i think yellow pink might be able to i don't know if red will be able to in conjunction with pink but green is not a factor in this fight for two turns because you can't k turn without going off the board so he's gonna have to too hard and then too hard again to get back in this now with rack with damaged engine, I think I think the E wings are kind of okay with Bump City right now, and just putting all their dice into rack. Yep. A couple other things that could have changed this uh, this entire situation is the couple of missed triggers by Jason. He missed both triple zero and Dauntless. Now you could argue that Dauntless may have been a decision to um, maybe not wanting to be stressed going into the next turn because you do have to take a stress in order to trigger that um, that being able to take an action after partially executing a maneuver uh, but the triple zero that was that was up for grabs as a mod as a modifier could have ended up with potentially a uh, a target lock focus uh, or target lock calculate situation against one of those e-wings um, you know so yeah, just... and then you would have saved vader for i guess you wouldn't you didn't have any defense dice because of the intimidation but mm-hmm being able to trigger Vader and still get that mod off is still, it's just such a great combo. Agreed. Now, as we have, I think, I'm sorry, go ahead, but, go ahead. I was gonna say, I think, I think every game has a couple turns that are like key turns, you know? It's like turning, like X-Wing turning point. This could be one of those turns where the decisions made now have the effects of lasting throughout the game. That's all I was going to say. Mm -hmm. I'm sure what you were going to say is more important. I oh. feel stupid. No, no, there's no reason to feel stupid. Uh, well, I was just going to remind people is, so the Galactic Championship Series, uh, Corellia, is consists of five different qualifying events this is one of five we have one every other weekend from now until we reach coruscant there will be a two-week break in between uh the final uh, qualifier and coruscant so if you are interested in playing in one of these events make sure to get your tickets now i will tell you that crate looks like it will eventually sell out just looking at the rate of tickets bought um if i know a lot of people were looking at that one that's the eastern united states one 
But we also have some where the time zones are uh, revolve around Europe as well as Australia. So go ahead, take a look at those. If you're planning on getting tickets, get them now. GoldSquadronPodcast.com. But here we go. It is TIE Fighter time. Too hard from green, like we pretty much knew was coming. Oh, let me see. I think... He got kind of to turn away and try to turn around with red and K turn with pink and yellow. Oh, did they all? Did they all bump? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Little, little tactical bump action. Yeah, just self bumps. Okay. So Arvel flies past. I believe relieves the stress. The five straight is blue on A wings. Takes a focus. And the boost with the stress. And it gets twin. Thank you so much. I'm excited to show you guys the stretch goals in between here because we got some absolutely redonkulous stuff. We smashed a goal yesterday, and um, I, I have met you with. A, I have another challenge for you, and trust me that there is some really cool stuff. There's actually what I believe is our best ship, that the best ship that I have available as a giveaway. It's a t is the top prize. It's not going to be easy to get to, but uh, I made that available. Challenge. We'll see. See what happens there. I like. I like. I like this move by Green. Yep. Makes it over the top. I like it. Likely will. We'll, yep. I, I actually. The block. I don't. I'm not a fan. I don't like. I don't, I'm not. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't I don't like the boost there. I feel that Rack most likely is going to the right side. You may have just given Rack a shot without having to rotate the arc. If if Rack does a one bank to the right, um, Rack has a range one. Yeah, I thought I thought the two bank left was probably Rack's move here. So you get the block, but Kind of, you also stop him from potentially smashing an asteroid. All right, and, and we're gonna get a lock from the E wing. Yep. Anyone's available except for Red, who's in range one. So I'm looking for the target locks around. Uh, Paul Stryker, no, the decimator does not have a stop on the dial. That was a question out there. I'm sure he's not the only person who's wondering that. That will stress the E-Wing. Uh, I don't know. Oh, oh my God, Rack. Okay. Interesting. All right, I Rack. So goes over the rock. Not in the gonna... box, please, sir. Yep, in the box. In the box. Just re-roll that. No consequences there. Hey, Brandon. You know what, though? Vader can still trigger, right? Uh, yes, absolutely it can. We will be able to do a damage to green. Or, yeah, I think yellow's probably in range two. Yeah, zero to two. We could do yellow and get some dice in on yellow. No green tokens for yellow to remove, either. All right, let's just double check a couple things. After you perform an action. Yeah, there's no stun pilot on rack, guys. There's some people are like, oh, doesn't he have stuns? No, 
Not today. Oh, damage and wounded only. Who needs actions when you're at anyway? No, he could Dauntless if he wanted to. Well, could he? Because of the asteroid? Wouldn't that make you skip your action? Mm, oh no, I guess, no. I guess it's outside of your action it, step. Exactly. Yeah. Looks like we're getting beta and triple zero triggers. So the players are asking if they can do both abilities. Yes, uh, of course. Don't see why not. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I didn't want to say nothing, but yeah. Two separate cards, both conditions are met. Yep. yep. So there's the Vader trigger. That's going to do a damage to yellow automatically. Auto magically, I think, uh, was a word I heard somebody say earlier today. Was that you, Greg? Uh, nope, not me. Oh, okay. I was trying to give you credit. I like to see. I'd like to take credit for it, but I feel like that would be wrong. <laughs> Triple zero, you just give Rack the calculate, who cares? Yep. But you give him the option to be wrong. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but the calculate actually does matter because yellow will have a shot into uh, into rack. There you go. There's a tri triple zero um, question there. Gives him the calculate, so he'll have a modifier on defense now when taking the shot from yellow. Yeah. Yep. Inside this obstructor, he will get a die. I believe that's going to be a. I think if you draw a straight line. Mm hmm. Yeah, his. It's going to be very close if it's even in Arkham. I think he's got the corner, like, zoomed all the way in. Phil Subto, thank you. And, yep, that is, he does in, have it. That is in Ark. Obstructed range, too. Right on the badonkadonk. Here we go. Somebody asking, did he Dauntless for an action? He did not. There was no Dauntless. We're beyond the dauntless stage now. Three versus one in Iraq. One crit. Does he have a target lock still? Look at Iraq. Most evasive ship in the game. Squiggled, baby. Red and green don't have shots. Pink won't get a shot. Beyond three now from the TIE Fighters. No bonds for anybody. This does favor the attack dice slightly. Here we go. One crit. Z. There you go. Boom. Got it. I'm so wary of appearing stupid in front of 500 people. I was like, can you roll an extra dice? <laughs> no, no. I we're we're, it, we're so good. Like maybe, I, there's, maybe there's some TIE fighter thing. Oh, and I believe. Just roll one less. I believe he's going to be taking a crit there. It's going to be half points on that e wing. Mm hmm. Little by little. Taking those shields. Continuing the we're barrage on down the yellow. 25 minutes left in this game. Yeah. Nothing there. But still, you have to kind of be happy with that. You didn't take any damage. You got an E-Wing down to half. There's only 25 minutes left in this game. Points are precious right now. They are. 
All right, now that we've gotten to the planning phase, we can go ahead and switch to camera angle. I saw people asking for, uh, we try not to switch to camera angle while things are going on because it can get really confusing, but during planning, it's a perfect time to do it. So we can go ahead and get that done. Just give me one moment. Cameraman, do your magic. All right, Nick, make sure to switch over the um, uh, the overlay. Now, player, Already done. for your bets, worry not. They are still intact with your original um, your original uh, bet. We just simply flipped it so that uh, we have the correct sides now. Can I say the betting worked out for me great yesterday? Because not only did I bet wrong on the one, but then you selected the wrong one, and then you gave everyone points on top of it. I was just rolling in it. <laughs> I had I had to try to give give back something for those who lost. What a day. Uh, what a as, day for me. As for the top-down view, I'll be honest, the reason I don't use it is because it gives me a headache. And I can't, like... <laughs> I gotta stare at I gotta I gotta do do too much right now. Uh, top down, not not a fan. I like the angled view because it gives you a little bit better depth. Mm-hmm. Same. Same, same, same. Alrighty. So yeah, we have the Death Star view of uh of of scarif i will tell you this map is actually kind of trippy looking at it from this side mm, not sure if i like this <laughs> <laughs> but anyway let's go ahead and uh and take a peek at a couple of things here with giving up half points on that yellow e-wing we have a score of 46 to 11 right now uh favoring jason now here's the thing with uh with jason's list he his priority is to he's his he knows that he's going to be bleeding points throughout the entire game. It's to bleed slow and to make sure you take things with you. I believe if Jason can continue to whittle down the E wings slowly and remember his triggers to make sure that he's taking advantage of some of that the free action economy and damage he's Lisk is able to put out, he can win this game. He just needs to stay consistent there. And we've gotten into activation. Here come the TIE Fighters. This is more of a regrouping turn for the TIE Fighters here. Mm -hmm. But the E-Wings are also in regrouping mode. They're hard turns. Pull up their dial here. I believe their one hearts are red. They are. And with no R4 on them. Mm -hmm. It's hard for them to tightly turn around. Yeah, they're probably just going to be busting some... Uh, well. Red cannot do a turnaround maneuver. Green could potentially do a K-turn. This is a good chance for yellow to sloop. Arvel making the turn. Too hard. Probably just get a focus boost here just to try to get Arvel back in somewhat position. Now, one of the things I want to see is how the Ewings are going to... All right, here we go. Might be also a regrouping turn for Daryl. The question is, if they both decide to regroup, who does that actually favor? Does that favor the TIE Fighters to be able to get in, in kind of a block again and take another pass? Or does it favor the E-Wings being able to try to get some focus fire on that Decimator? Because I will say, if Daryl can get the half points on the Decimator, that could lock up the game. Overall, and I'm not saying this is a, as a necessary bad thing, our, our overall pace is a little bit under... Um, what most games have been. So I, I think that we're, we don't have too many turns left in this game. We've maybe got a max of three at the pace that we're going right now. Yeah, the, the, the pace is probably under like your standard tabletop game, but it's every turn is so important. There's a lot of ships on the field, so it's not exactly like no one's slow playing or anything. Right, exactly. Um, it's just going to be real hard to get shots on Rack this turn. 
I think Green's probably the only one who has a chance. And uh, oh, he went over the debris as well. Hit a debris, stressed. You know, you know what card likes stressed ships that can't take actions? Vader. Vader. Mm -hmm. Ep one. It's om nom nom nom. And, uh, Sloan gets that reroll too. Stress ships. That's right. So basically, a lot. <laughs> Can num also like stress if we're just naming ships? <laughs> Irrelevant. But here we go. Let's roll for that debris on a crit. He will take a critical damage. At this point, it would just be a shield. No go. Oh, but he is going to end up going over that stress or that debris again. Those TIE Fighters looking hungry. If I'm Daryl, got to make sure that you do a blue maneuver over those debris clouds to not end up double stress. I think he gave Red a uh, stress instead of Green. I think Red has a two stack on him there. Uh, no, Green has a stress as well. It's just Pictures in the front. Nero Sama, thank you so much for the sub. We're at 171 right now. Super excited to again to show you guys the stretch goals when we get to that point. Takes a barrel roll. I like this barrel roll. Good barrel roll. And Rack might be... Is that going to be range 2 to green? That might I, be. I would think so. I mean, if anything, you probably just take a lock. Worst comes to worst. And you make sure that you use all the tools in your arsenal in order to do some damage there. Could also... Yeah, this, is, this is a great shot for Rack. Could also just reinforce the back as well for another focus modifier, just depending on what's his style. Action was to repair a crit, flipped over the wounded pilot. Now I believe- I'll say this for Rack. He's a little bit out there on his own right now. Yeah, the Oh, here we go. Vader trigger right here. That's range two in arc. That's a damage. This is dark Get damage green. So that's the first shield, I believe, on the green E wing. Wait, can he take it on red? Oh, he's gonna shoot it. I'm confused. I read his stack. All right, not exactly clear. So I know we got two hits there. Did he? Did he not made her? Well, well, the force is face down. So I mean, face up. So that would mean no Vader and no extra damage was dished out there. One evade, and two versus five dice, guaranteed damage. That's range three through the rock, five dice. So while unlikely, was able to get a damage there onto the red E-wing. One more away from half. No shots incoming from these E wings. 16 minutes left, so we're looking at maybe at this rate, like two turns. You gotta get rack. Mm hmm. And Jason, Jason might even turn to the right here. I think that would be a super smart play. Get your get rack behind your TIE fighters, let your TIE fighters out in front.
back. It does have damaged engine. So any any hard turn is gonna be stressful for him. Mm hmm The good news is I don't believe reds go up to purple, so in one hard and just stay red. Yep, and you know, a little bit of hindsight thinking here. The reason maybe for holding on to the the rack trigger, excuse me, the Vader trigger from rack may have been just to have the modifier going into red if that was the goal to try to mm -hmm. get the half points there. My argument against why he probably should have just used Vader there is, you know, obviously hindsight's twenty twenty, but you end up essentially in the same situation where you have, you've gotten an additional shield off of one of the E-wings, your attack probably would not have gotten, in, in, in reality, it was unlikely to do damage on red. This was a bit of an outlier where he was able to get a little bit, uh, get a shield and get closer to half. But, um, you know, I know that he, there's always a decision, like a, a tree of decisions that people go through. I know a lot of times it's easy to, to react and say, oh, that's wrong. Um, but, you know, he, he went for an unlikely scenario, and it worked out because he is now one shield away from half on red. Again, unlikely, but it worked out. Sometimes it just works out. Yeah, it definitely worked out. Mathematically, it probably wasn't like the mathematical choice, but... This game, while it does boil down to math sometimes, sometimes you just have to have a plan and go with your plan. Mm -hmm. Like, a little bit like real life there. And choosing the, the right mathematical choice every time isn't going to always lead to success. The TIE Fighters just coming in around. No reason for them to get speedy. Here comes Arbel, hero of the resistance, right? That's right. Hero. One hole <laughs> only on there. Only yeah. one hole. Who needs more hole in your Arbel? Arbel lives on one hole. <laughs> Takes a barrel. focus. Well, he can't focus and barrel roll. Right, yeah. So as soon as that focus gets slapped down, we no barrel rolls happen. I think he just didn't remove it from last turn. Maybe. Look at Nick being the bad guy for us. What a nice man. <laughs> Here we go, waiting for our next ship to be moved. Red is going to take some target locks. This is set up for a big turn. Yep, it, this look, next, it looks this like this one is huge. Yeah, it looks like Daryl is regrouping. That's a, a take a stress, lose a stress there. So ending stress after doing the three forward. No consequences there. Well, if no one's going to say it, I'm going to say it. These E-Wings have to start shooting. Yes. Oh, yeah. If you're down 35 points. You need <laughs> to start getting shots. There's 11 minutes left. Come on, fellas. Yeah, what I'm hoping to see here for Daryl, the yellow E-Wing is already half points. I, I know you don't want to give up the ship completely, but you need to get into the fight. You have the hard two. Use the boost. You already have a target lock set up. Try to get... Rack to half. Right now, Rack has 10 health left. That means you're two away. Only two away from getting a, so many points. Uh -huh. What would you get? 60, 59 points? Is that what that comes out to? Maths. Uh, 50, 55. 55. 56. You get 56. There you go. 56 because they round up on the half. Yes. So 56 there. Just a big chunk of points. Big chunk. That's what I'm looking for. And, and Rack I mean, is Rack looking is for it. He's feasting right now. He's getting uncontested shots. 
And the aggressiveness from from Jason here is uh is I find it interesting, but I I like I like the mochismo. <laughs> here we go. No Vader here. These are obstructed shots, but as we've seen. These obstructed shots on unmodded defense dice can go through. And he does have that reinforce in the front. He does have that reinforce in the front, by the way. So he will be able to change one focus to a crit if it comes up. And he with Vader, he'd get two. Now you just use Rack's ability, focus to crit. There's no reason to use Vader. Yeah, well, I'm gonna say if he had two focuses, he could. Two. Oh yes, 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 yes. Sorry, missed missed the beginning of your sentence. Hit crit. Hit crit with BT. What was that on green? No, the crit was from uh, Rax ability. Crit goes through on red. That's half points onto the red E wing. Yeah. Now, if you're not intent on attacking Rack, you really need to be. So. Correct call there, going for the points. I know that he could be shooting the stress ship, but um, again, not necessarily the right choice. He was able to get that one shield he needed and guaranteed some more points. It's now 73-11. Yeah. And I'll say, this is the turn. This is it right here, because you're, all your ships are going to get shots on Rack this turn if you maneuver it. Like, Rack can't stop. Like green might be stressed, but you can you can make this happen. And you you need those fifty six points. Like that gives you seventy seven. If you don't lose anything else, you need this. The Tie Fighters aren't in it right now, so Carol needs to have a little sense of urgency in this maneuver to try and get these shots. So. Looking, I know some people are, oh, yeah. are trying to trying to <laughs> math. trying to do some math in the chat. So let's let's do it. Let's do it together here. So again, rack if half gives up fifty six points. If we added that to Daryl's current eleven, he would be at sixty seven. So ha just getting half of rack is not enough to put Daryl ahead. So as long as Jason stays ahead of the damage race, he's going to be at the advantage. So what I want to see from Jason is you still got to be, I think, a little bit aggressive with some of the TIE Fighters. Make sure you're getting shots. You're feeling really good if you can get one of the E-Wings down or get another half. Preferably, preferably, you want to, um, you know, get, get one of the ships completely off the board. Let's go ahead and flip back so really to the other to side. Do is get two turns in. Yep. And Nick, would just do a quick swappy swap. <clears throat> Nick ran away to get a bagel, apparently. <laughs> we'll get that swapped in that a second. That's what we're calling it. <laughs> So with six minutes, again, with our with how things have been going, this is likely going to be the last turn. Now, this is going to be an interesting one. Yeah, you don't really have time to think, in my opinion. You need to go. Yeah, I would say that right now, an additional turn after this one actually favors Daryl more than it favors Jason. Because you're more likely to be able to kill a couple more TIE Fighters. Well, you need to. Apparently, I can't do math. So, like, if you half Dauntless here, you either need to kill Dauntless or half Dauntless and get the rest of that TIE Fighter. Mm-hmm. Go, go, power E-Wings. Barrel roll for Arvel there. I don't hate it. Although, without the token, if he doesn't bomb, Vader can just kill Arvel. And a 
delay get into a boost, perhaps? He's thinking about it. He's trying to go for a block. Arvel able to fire at range zero at an enemy ship. All right, just going forward. I think I would have preferred... See, at... No, like, he might still be able to get a shot if, uh... If he goes straight, be able to catch the corner. Yeah. I think I would have hey, preferred dear, the bank boost. Yes, please. Okay. Done. Uh, but actually, the he other thing is, right. if if he bumps, he can dauntless, then Vader, and just auto kill Arvel. That's the other <laughs> other option. Oh. I'm not sure if Jason wow. sees it, but that that big is available. Play. That no, is available. That is a big brain play. Bump, you weren't getting a token with green anyway. It's fine. Red. Five straight. Oof. I mean, not that I know my distances in TTS, but I'd like to see the four and then a boost to get more of an angle. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. I think what Daryl's trying to do, he's trying to hug this side of the board in order to only have shots on rack and the TIE fighters not be able to reach. I think that might be the idea if they if he's maybe thinking he has one more turn after this. But it's, you know, it's kind of kind of a interesting angles here for sure. There's a barrel roll to give him a little bit more angle. And there, uh, well, he actually, the there's, there's, he's already in that side arc. Yes, there's no need to dauntless for the rotate. You could get yourself another token if you want it. There's a stress. There's the reinforce that's going towards the front. Slaps it down. The front is reinforced. Aider on Arvel, and Arvel is gone. D E D dead. Let's get some F's in the chat for Arvel Crinid. Eleven to ninety-two. Now, so now the game is kill rack. Yep. Yeah, you got to take him completely off the board. I don't know if you have enough time though. Ten hole. You need some some lucky crits. Yeah, you need some lucky crits. Let's see. Next turn, what's going to happen is Rack will turn into the E wings to take away one of the shots. So if you don't get if you don't get five or six this turn, you're probably not going to be able to do it. Three. I love it when you draw on your wealth of experience watching and playing games to deliver insightful commentary. Going into green. And two crits. We'll, we'll get the Rack third City. because of Rack's ability. Three crit, crits. crit, crit. He needs some of eight, so that could be points as well. Waiting for the defensive response. And this was going at the green E Wing, who currently has no focus. And takes half oh, points. No. Just takes them. They are mine. Thank you, Mama. May I have another slice? Mmm. Oof. Be down. Yep. And this is going to be the last turn of our game. You can do 10 damage to Rack, you win. Hope. You, you've told me that Rebellions are built on hope. We need double damages. Yeah, I think, uh, I think Jin had a better chance. <laughs> Two hits. Reinforce. Reduce it. We'll do reduce that down to one. 
And we'll be able to get uh, two through the reinforce after spending the focus. Two ships, eight damage. Let's go. You can't tell me you don't root for situations like this. <laughs> I, it's it's unlikely, but. <laughs> but if it happens. But if it happens, it's that, like a moment. Yep. One of my one of my favorite videos of yours. I don't I don't remember what event it was, but it was an in person event. Mm -hmm. And like the the pure joy I hear in your voice when you're like. 100 to 100 final salvo <laughs> it's McGiddy. i know i know exactly which one that is that is the uh zach bart versus paul olsen final of lvo early average roll we'll get a target lock here i think yep you need two hits in order to do more damage than just a crit so the hit gets canceled out by the reinforced and it is a crit Fast walk zero, yes, very good memory. I can tell you. And I believe that that is it. I'm not sure if uh, anything else has range. Nope, that is it. All right, yellow that is. Look like yellow has a shot. That's the ball game. Over. Thank you to Daryl and Jason for playing. Congratulations to Jason for winning his top 32 game and getting into the top 16. By the way, for anybody who's playing in future uh, qualifiers, they actually added today, added a new prize for the top 16 players, um, which we're, we're going to get that added to.